Hey what's up everyone, Cardio one here, thanks for joining me on another video. Today I'm going to be playing Difficulty 20 Single Story House again, but this time I'm going to be doing hints and tips, the best way to get items to work and identify the ghosts on the highest difficulty. Playing solo helps a lot. Working out how to play Difficulty 20, mainly because there's no one else in the team who can take items and die with the items uh, and kind of leave you working out whether it's gas or not without an air scanner. So it's good to get this practice in, um, then you know, at least when you play with a team you can go and get your items first, know which ones to take before other people do. Um, it's quite important in this game. But the main purpose of these tutorials is to show you that difficulty 20 is not that hard. Uh, make sure you subscribe, then you get to see all the videos. There's all sorts of hints and tips on this channel, so uh, make sure you check them all out. And make sure you leave a like if it helps you. Once everybody's done and made their guesses, everybody should head into the van and you'll be out. Alright, so first things first, I've taken a thermometer and air scanner. Well, I'll drop the lantern here just so I can take it around the house with me and you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I've got an NV cam. You can either take an NV cam or the video camera, put it through a window. If you need to use the NV cam through a window, you have to glitch into the wall or the window. Um, in the hallway, you don't need to. You can just stand outside and the orb will show if it's in there. Um, but what I'm doing now, walking around the outside of the house, checking the rooms for a temperature which starts with 20. The door's just closed on its own, so the hunt has started. So I should be able to just walk around the house and you can hear the ghost. It's in the kitchen. Now, I knew it was in the kitchen before I saw it. And that's because if you look here, stand here by the laundry room, you can hear it. If you stand by the garage, you can't hear it, okay? So what you do, if you could, if you stand by the garage and you hear it, it's in the laundry room. If you stand by the laundry and you start to hear it, it's in the kitchen. If you start to hear it when you're at the kitchen, it's probably in the guest bedroom. So you can always hear it in the room before, but you're going to find a ghost room eventually. It's just a, a kind of tip to help you find it a little bit quicker, just to follow the sound. Now what I'm about to show you is something I've shown in the video already. I've gone into the window and I've got the temperature. I've moved away from the window, I'm still getting a temperature reading. I've moved further back from the house, I'm still getting a temperature reading from that room. It's not from any other room, it's just the ghost room. As you can see, I'm still getting a gas reading on the air scanner. This is because the game still thinks I'm inside the room. You should be able to hear the sound of like a breeze. I'll move away from the ghost hunt. You can hear it along with the footsteps. Now I'm hoping you can all hear that. It's a really important sound in this game. So it's important to wear headphones when you're doing this. But here I am, I'm on the van. I've still got the gas reading. I can still hear that sound of the house. I'm gonna fly a bit further behind the van. See how far I can get. I'm still getting the room's temperature. As long as I can see, see, it's gone down 16. As long as I can see gas, phosphine, sorry, 24, or whatever it is on that air scanner, then the game still thinks I'm in the ghost room and the temperature will keep dropping on the thermometer. The temperature will only drop if you're inside the ghost room. If you listen carefully now, the sound has stopped. That breeze sound has stopped. The game no longer thinks I'm inside the house. That's because this area by the front door is kind of a, a no house sound zone. What I'm gonna do now, I'll walk around the corner, I'll push into the laundry room or the garage you can hear the house sound again, but I'm not picking up the room's temperature because I'm getting a garage. Now I'm back in the kitchen because I touched the kitchen window. You can see I've got a gas back. The temperature will again be starting to drop. So it's really important to do this because you can get gas, orb and freezing temperature from outside, which is super important because free ghosts you can get from outside without having to set foot inside the house. And those are ghoul, wither and shade. Now I've just looked with the NV camera glitched in through the window, you probably saw me being flung around then. There's no orb, which will make it spook or spectre. If there was an orb, it would be wither, and also the um, temperature would keep dropping. So I can drop my thermometer now because I know it's not going to freeze. We've already got the gas. Still don't need the air scanner, so I'll take a crucifix, the EMF. Just check the tasks. I'll take some salt with me. I'll take the lantern. Now, what I'm going to show you now is really important because right now we don't know where the ghost is stood. We need to find its exact position. So watch this. I've picked up the lantern. I'm dragging it. Obviously, you need to be a PC or laptop user to do this. 
and there, as you can see, it's just collided with something in midair. I put the salt down. You can see the salt has been stepped in. So that's where the ghost is. See, easy, found it straight away. You can do this on any difficulty if you don't know where the ghost is and you want to quickly find it. You pick up your lantern, you can use a birdcage as well. You pick up your lantern, you drag it. Obviously you can't do it if you're on mobile, so I'm sorry any mobile users, this won't help you. But you just need to pick it up, drag it through the air until it collides with something. If you have no idea where the ghost is in the room, you can literally just walk around the room waving it around until it hits something that you can't see. Just make sure you have a crucifix equipped while you're doing this because you never know it might spawn behind you and you're oofed straight away. So hold your crucifix out and drag the lantern. Eventually it will hit something that you can't see and there's your ghost. I've gone back out and I've got the birdcage. So I'm going to show you now if I walk forward with the birdcage, watch the movement and wave it around. It's just touch something there. Now what happens is you can move the ghost doing this, okay? So when it collides with it and you walk forward, you can push the ghost. So the ghost now may not be where that salt is. This is the only downside to this. You just move it around there, it's just stopped against something. So the ghost is probably to the left of that birdcage now, because I've moved it slightly away from the salt. I will stand here with the birdcage. I can check the EMF again in a minute. Perfect, there, you can see. I have moved it, if I put the birdcage, can you see it moving now? It's slowly moving. If I step forward into it, I'll push the ghost back. The birdcage is positioned right where the ghost's head is. That's where the hitbox is. Nothing's happening yet. Could still be Spectre. I've got my EMF reader. I will try it in a second. Birds usually died around this time. Oh, take my crucifix, I need to be quick. Right, I better go and get another crucifix. I should probably say it was easy to find them because I knew where the ghost was. The ghost was in its original spawn position, as you could see through the window when we were outside. It hadn't moved. Uh, when I glitched in, it didn't set the ghost off an attack. So I knew that's the area I had to be. I don't know its exact position. I can't just walk in there and say that spot there is where the ghost is. But I knew it was around that area, which is why I found it so quickly. Um, another thing that happens is when you do set a ghost off on an attack, when you kind of glitch into a window and you see it running towards the front door and back repeatedly really fast, when it respawns, it will be in a different place. Now what happens is in the kitchen, when it attacks the front door, it'll do it a few times and then it will get stuck and it gets stuck on the counter between the sink and the fridge. It will always be there or there's a second place it gets stuck as well, at the sink. So it looks like it's washing the pots. Now, hopefully I'll be able to um, do a round where we can see that. It may actually happen in this game right now, this one, because uh, we're in the kitchen. If we can set it off on a hunt, I can show you what happens. Oh, uh, we got EMF 5 then. Sorry, I was too busy talking. So we know it's Spectre. Uh, we need to anger the ghost. So we need to see what the name is. Copy and paste the name, enter it into the chat box. And then um, repeatedly spam the chat. Now you can type the name in. This time it's Robert Christopher. Copy the name, paste it repeatedly. We're after a space in the box like I'm doing now and then copy the whole text and then paste that like this or you can just individually copy and paste the name doesn't always make much difference technically it should be quicker this way because you're spamming its name more often um, whether the game sees multiple names or just one name if you see what I mean uh, when you press enter remains to be seen it can be it's worked now it wasn't too bad but either way works fine i'm going to fill in my journal now so we've got gas uh spirit book in the emf5 obviously we didn't check the spirit book we don't need to it's definitely spirit book i'm gonna leave a reminder to make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and leave lots of likes and comments and 
all that kind of stuff. Let's see how much XP we got from this one. Should have done all right. I've got 2,000 XP, $2,600. Um, I'll stick to this map again. Difficulty 20. I'll buy my usual items, which are one thermometer, free salt, in case I have a bad shot. Uh, two crucifix and an NV cam. I will start the next game. One thing I noticed recently when I'm recording, um, I'm sure it never used to happen, but when I click on an item, you'll see it now in this video, um, it doesn't, the cursor isn't touching the item. When I play it, the cursor touches the item and I click on it and I pick it up. But when I watch the video back, the cursor isn't touching the item. So it looks like I've just clicked the table and picked up a, I don't know, lantern. Um, if you know why this happens, put it in the comment and let me know, because I will be interested in finding out why it does that. Um, I'm not the most technical person. I could probably Google it, to be honest. But um, Leave a comment, let me know. Um, let's see if it does it now. Um, obviously, I'm playing it live, so I can't... I'm clicking on the items. Um, you may see it differently. Um, I won't know until I edit it afterwards. Anyway, got my thermometer. Gonna pick up a lantern and go around the outside of the house, checking the walls. I left the front door open so I can hear it click. I know it started hunting. Then I can just follow the sound around. But until that happens, I need to find the room. I wanna do it as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna use a thermometer, walk around the outside of the house. I'm all the way at the back. Um, nothing so far. So it should be living room or the twin bedroom. Let's just check in this window here. It's dropped to 20. So I'm going to drop my camera through this window. It wasn't gas. I stay away from the house and I can still get a connection. Like I showed you earlier. Um, if I come to the front of the house, I will lose the connection again. Right there, the breeze sound stopped. I'm going to go inside because it hasn't started hunting yet. The door's still open. So it gives me a chance just to run in there. I'll check to see if it was orb or not in a minute. Um, I'll just swap my positions around. So I've got my um, crucifix, then the EMF reader, and then the spirit box. I find it easier just to check items when they're in that order. Uh, start to hunt. Eee, it's hit me. Okay. Again, I can use my lantern to find out. I've got to pick up a move because I couldn't pick it up. Um, to find out where the ghost is. So it's going to be around here somewhere. Oh, what was that? A ghost event. Okay, so. Oh, there you go, spirit box. Spirit box always works where the EMF beeps. Okay? It's a rule of thumb. Let's see if it hits five or not. Um, pop back out. Oh, I'll show you it again. Let's let's watch the. Um, I'll drop my. I need to pick it up. It keeps getting stuck in the floor. So I pick up the lantern again. I'll move it back here. Pick it up and then watch it collide when it hits the ghost. Oh, ghost is hunted. Okay, so the ghost has moved position. Um, I will. There. Can you? Did you see that? The lantern collided with something and then you hear the whip sound of the ghost moving. Oh, I'm locked in now because the, the hunt ended too fast. So let's try it again. The ghost is around here. Yeah. So it was easy to find with the lantern. That's twice I've done it now. What I'll do actually, I'll, if I stay over here and let the ghost hunt, I need to let it hunt for a couple of seconds, then let it attack me with the crucifix obviously in my hand. That way, the door will then unlock. Okay, people still seem to think that the ghost has locked them inside the house. It hasn't done that. What has happened is the ghost attacked me. I was so close to the ghost that when the hunt ended, it didn't give the door a chance to unlock. Now, listen, the creaking sound of the ghost has moved. Okay, so the ghost has reset to its original spawn position. If you play that video back, um, you can probably hear the moment it moved. So before it was just in the entrance of the kitchen and now the sound is here in the middle of the room. So it's back where it originally started when uh, it first hunted. 
Now what I think I'll do is go back down with the lantern and just drag it around to see if it collides with something in the air just to make sure it is in the middle of the room and not on the coffee table. What happens is just like it does in the kitchen after it's attacked the front door it, oh there it is it's right there look um perfect uh, what happens is when it attacks from the living room it goes to the front door and repeatedly attacks it resets on the coffee table and not in the middle of the room just like in the kitchen when it resets on the, the counter or by the sink and not in the middle of the kitchen so um, I'm just gonna stand here slightly away from the ghost so when it hunts it has a moment before it hits me and in that time the ghost should or the door should unlock I'll just stay slightly out of sight I hope it won't take too long oh something now so that's all we need that little bit of time there that's all we need for it to unlock this door right the next thing we need to do is I'll just look at the tasks we put a camera through the window so we need to check to see if there's an orb or not I didn't use the NV cam I just put a video camera through the window so oh there we go we've got no orb we've got spirit box and no orb it can only be a whisper that's all you need to know for a whisper it's that easy so no evidences you can get a ghoul and by that i mean no orb no gas no freezing temperature it's a ghoul so you can get that from outside you can get shade from outside because it's orb not gas and no freezing temperatures you can get wither from outside because it's gas and orb and a whisper you get no evidences apart from spirit box so you get no orb no freezing spirit box and it's whisper you don't even need a freezing temperature, you just need to know no orb and spirit box works to get whisper. Makes it a lot easier. So this video is just about making things a little bit easier for you on difficulty 20. Because once you know these things, it really is easy to do. I mean you can still die if you're being careless or you lose a crucifix at the wrong time and you're locked in the house and all sorts of things can happen. I die, you know, I do die in this game. People think because I'm a high level I never die. It's not true. You know, a noob has got me killed before by taking the crucifix and not protecting me. You know, they didn't know what to do with the crucifix. Um, they just looked after themselves and not the team. So yeah, I do die. It is true. But hopefully this video will help you get the ghost quickly and get out the house before it hunts or before it attacks. Or get the ghost from outside without having to go in. That kind of thing. And hopefully I'll get to show you a few items at work, such as the um, spirit book, bird cage, the ones that are really hard to do on 20. I'll show you how to make it easy to get them to work on 20 because there is a way you just need to understand it so here we go this is round number three on this video um, single story again difficulty 20 of course because that's the whole point of this video uh, yes I'm just filling in time right now while it loads <laughs> go check okay. the whiteboard for any information that you might need once everybody's done and made your guesses thermometer everybody should head into the lantern you'll be out drop lantern pick up Air scanner, get video camera, check this room first, pick up lantern, it's hunting already, okay so this should be easy to find now, don't need to keep checking the rooms, just look for the sound, it could be this side of the house, could be the other side of the house, again I'm at the laundry, which means it's in the kitchen, if I'd heard the ghost hunting when I was next to the garage I would have known it's the laundry if you're going to use the video camera in the kitchen put it next to the window where I did just there just to the right hand side of the window um, we didn't get gas it was only five now if I see it, I glitched in then the ghost is now set on this hunt did you see it run towards the front door now I can still hear it in the kitchen it wasn't moving now that means it has got stuck already. If you hear the sound come and go, it means it's um, obviously you hear the sound of the ghost when you're near the ghost. So if you hear the ghost and then it stops, you know that it's charging at the front door, at the ghost orb there. If it stays in one place, the ghost is stuck in that room. 
So what I'm going to show you now is what I mentioned earlier in the kitchen. The ghost is stuck. So it's either going to be washing the pots at the sink or it's going to be on the counter next to the fridge. Uh, I've got a flashlight so we've got a good look into the kitchen. This is what the flashlight is best for looking through the window. We should be able to... There you go, it's at the sink. So it's like I said, it's stood at the sink. But it, it really does look like it's washing the pots. <laughs> Brilliant. So like I said, it'll either stop there or it'll stop next to the fridge. So that's where we will need to be when we go inside the house. We can use the lantern or the birdcage or whatever to find the exact location by, like I said, moving it through the air until it hits an invisible object. But for now, we can't do anything until the hunt stops. So I've got the room's temperature on the thermometer. That's going to continue dropping. I've got a ghost orb and it's not gas. So it's either going to be um, poltergeist, banshee, spirit or shade. I just need to see if it drops beneath 10.2. I'll just enter ghost orb in my journal while I wait and then check thermometer. It's 10.7 any second now. I should find out 10. There you go. It's going to freeze. So I have ghost orb freezing temperature. I'll add that to my journal. Um, I need a thermometer, I need to drop the flashlight. Get a crucifix, EMF reader and spirit box. I will check them first. I type, are you here into the chat? So I can use the spirit box quickly without having to type it again. Now we know the ghost is washing the pots. So if I move the lantern, it's collided right there. So there it is. Depending on the ghost model, it's not always possible for the EMF to work straight away. Certain ghost models make it a bit more difficult. This is one of them from what I remember looking through the window washing the pots. I think it's the split headed ghost. Um, that's always the most difficult out of all of them. Now it's here. Look, it's collided with me there. So I may have to go onto the counter and come at it from a different angle. I'll just keep trying. It's definitely here. So I'll, oh, it's stuck on it already. Oh, oh. There you go, see from the counter. I had to come in from above. I tried a box, it didn't work. I'll get out quickly for it hunts. So yeah, I had to come in at the split head from above and down into its head where the hitbox is. It doesn't always work where the hitbox is. Um, it's a rule of thumb I use to get the birdcage and the spirit book to work. The EMF doesn't always work where the hitbox is. Uh, just then it did. So it wasn't box, it could be a spirit because I didn't get EMF 5. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back into the room, I'm going to go back onto the counter uh, and then I'm going to, I'll try the box again. I'm going to try, because I can keep hold of the box as long as I've dropped the book and I can drag it. What I'm going to do, um, I know the ghost is here and I know the position I need to get the spirit so their spirit book, sorry, and the birdcage to work, I need it to be above coming down onto split head's head. So if I put the book here above the ghost, so it's kind of balancing on its, there you go, look, sorry, I'm slightly out of place. Right here, it's on its back, top of its head. If I keep the book there, if it's spirit book and it's a spirit, the book will write if it's in that position, okay? So it's kind of coming in from above, almost like, Placing the book on top of it. There you go, it's been written in. Almost like placing the, the book on top of the ghost, laying it down. If it was a, a demon, I could have put the birdcage and balanced it on top of the ghost and the bird eventually would die. So that's how you get the spirit book to work on difficulty 20. The majority of people can't do that or don't know how to do that. So there's a super useful cardio one tip for difficulty 20. Spirit bot works, birdcage works, everything works. The only things that don't work are the two tasks, the moving tasks. So the door move and the object move. 
99% of the time they do not work just skip them it's not worth waiting for it's probably not going to work occasionally I've come back to the board and it says done uh, it's fluke it used to work perfectly it broke it never got fixed it's incredibly annoying but yeah just avoid them tasks here we go spamming the ghost again I'm doing it this way like I did before hopefully it won't take too long if you just don't want the video just watching me spam my name for ages and it's done that's good so we've got spirit book freezing temperatures and ghost orb it's a spirit exit I think what I'll do for my next video is make a video of all the locations on single story where the ghost respawns in different positions after it's attacked the front door because I can think of three or four rooms where it always changes its location after the hunt has ended so I think I'll do that for my next video while I think about it and for one last time I will buy the thermometer, salt, crucifix, NV camera start the last game let's see what we get this time it would be good if we got the bird cage to work on this video just uh, you know again to show you how it can be done I did do a very quick video once on getting the bird to die on difficulty 20 obviously we don't really want the bird to die because birds are lovely things most of the time except seagulls because they're just evil um, and pigeons are dirty rats uh, but you know we like birds it's a shame they have to die but of course they're not real birds so I'm clearly just Fill in dead right. air space so <laughs> while I wait for the game to load. Okay, so one last time. Thermometer, lantern, air scanner. After I've dropped the lantern, and pick up a video camera. Work my way around the house to find the room. So always start this way. Go right to left from the master bedroom. Quickly check the hallway. I'll leave the door open when I hear it slam shut. I know the hunt has started. Uh, it's in the garage. That's nice and close. And we've got gas. So here, in between the two garage doors, the best place to put the camera. What I'll do, I'll put the lantern in next to it so you can see how... And I'll go back to the van. You can see how clear the view is if I do that. It's always on the door shut so it's hunting. There you go, got no orb. You can see the hitbox above the split head ghost. So I'll check the EMF with the ghost, see if it's Spectre. If I don't get EMF 5 and I need to check the bird cage, I will be aiming for that hitbox above the ghost. You need to get the bird pretty much close to the hitbox for it to die quickly. So that's what we'll do. We just need to wait for this hunt to end. I'll put some salt there just in case it, I manage to make it attack the front door. I'll put some there in case it tries to attack me through the wall. And I'm going to run into the wall, glitch in. I've set it off on a hunt. See? It's running around. Okay, so it should have hit the salt on the front door now. I'll try and put some salt in the middle. Uh, it's just attacked me and hit my crucifix. You can see the salt in the wall is done there. I'll just glitch out. So we've got one salt done there, the other salt should be done. So I'll go in with the birdcage and the EMF reader, see the salt's done there. I've already got a lantern in the room so I'll just use my EMF to light my way there so I don't walk into the walls and I can see where the door is. So the garage should be well lit. Oh, it's on tin, crucifix, I'll let it attack me. If I stand here, yeah, it's gone over that salt as well. We'll see we only need one salt doing, but right, so don't know where the ghost is. Use the lantern. Uh, it's just hit there, so that's where the ghost is. Ah oh, perfect, look at that. See works works sweet as anything. So drop the birdcage. This is where I'll need to check. It just tried to attack me again. So that means the ghost has moved, so I'm going to have to try and find the new location. Oh, it's still there. Look. Now. I need to get the bird on top of that hitbox. So I'm going to just hold it here and hope it's there. 
Again, the problem with this, I may end up moving the ghost. That's why it's not always so straightforward. If I move the bird like this, it might hit an invisible target. I'll use a lantern. Can't quite work out where it is now. May have moved back to the original spawn. Tricky little one now, actually. Oh, there, it's just hit something there, look. So that's where the ghost is, it's moved back to the probably original spawn point, actually. Now, can you see it's, the, the cage is spinning, so it's colliding with the ghost. So I think I may actually be lifting the ghost up. That can happen as well. Instead of just pushing it, you can actually fling the ghost. A ghost event will be very useful now so you can see what's happening. So I'll, I'll use the lantern. There again it's spun, so the ghost is where the lantern is right now. So I'll try and lift the birdcage up, put it where I think the head of the ghost is, and try and get it on the hitbox. Or as close to the hitbox as I can. I don't think I'm close to it. I think I might be a bit too low, actually. I'll just... See, it's spinning again, so it's gliding with the, the ghost. If I get a ghost event, I can see the ghost and I can see the hitbox, so I can place the bird exactly. Oh, not just a ghost event. When the, the ghost appears, and it's, it's running your sanity down, and it'll either turn into a ghost event. Oh, there we go, we've got a ghost event now, actually. Get a bit closer. See, I'm spinning the ghost, did you see that? I was flipping it up. Right, so the EMF's working here. We know the ghost is there. I'll lift the bird up. Now, it's collided with ghosts. It's, it kind of, look. I'm, I'm pretty much put it on top of the ghost there. Now let's get it in the right position. I spun it again. Oh look, I'm flipping it. I don't like these split head ghosts. Perfect position there, look. Okay, so the bird is... Top of the, the ghost. There's the hitbox. There's the bird. If we wait a moment, without pushing the ghost, let's see what happens. Still not EMF 5. Let's just wait. It's attacked me again. I think it's still in the same place. There you go, look, the birds died. So it was very close to the hitbox, as close as I could get with the uh, birdcage and the hitbox. So we have a spook, the ghost is hunting again. What I'll do now, I'll just glitch into this wall, let it attack me. Here he comes. Now we can just check the tasks. Oh, we had double salt, that's good. So we can get out of here. So hopefully these have been quite helpful to you, showing you how to get the ghost from outside check the rooms quickly, kill the bird, get the spirit book to write, find the location of the ghosts using a lantern. Um, all things I use every time I play this game. And some nice points from the spook. Um, try it out, let me know how you get on, leave a comment. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll try and make the next video really soon. And Make sure you subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.